Okay, so. We now see before us what it is that needs to be completed in the next phase of works. Um, I've been arranging what Fred Dibner would call bright work. Bright work. Um, and that's shiny things. Uh, shiny things that catch the eye and give um, a, a proportion um, and a feeling of um, space and surface. It's quite a the placement of these shiny things. I've been doing for, I've probably been out here for an hour already. I'm going to have a cup of tea and come out here and again. Uh, because the the interaction of these geometric uh, shapes with the geometry of the boat, uh, to my eye, is an extremely complex one. And I've been moving the holes millimetres and the cleat. So we'll look at what we've got. The bright work consists of portholes, an unusually placed cleat uh, for the spring lines. We'll go into mooring later, but to secure the warps uh, without uh, making the side deck difficult to walk down. Um, another hole and the flue pipe, which will be part of an other film. Uh, but lots of things going on in parallel, but we'll just talk about the portholes here. Uh, so, I've been moving around the boat and just trying to get the relationship between these parts. Correct? I think there is no correct. Um, decorous, pleasing to the eye, because this is really Armin's face. These are eyes, a bit of a nose. That is the way that windows are. They are the making um, of the personality of an object or a building. Um, so we've got a sort of a best fit for where they were supposed to be. Uh, marked around, found the centre point, um, and also considered what is the middle of this uh, panel. Um, because it has, you know, it has different orientations. So I've marked the top orientation, which is the line of the coach roof, and you can see the coach roof has got a has got a dish to it. Um, I've also marked it on the bottom using a block, slid it along with a pen there. Um, the 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 line above the deck, the line of the deck, um, and then I've additionally marked um, the edge, the the end of the flat bit. So when it starts to cove there and here where it starts to cove off the other way so that line perpendicular uh, parallel with the line of the coach roof this line parallel with the line of the deck pass perpendicular lines from those lines through the center point that was marked originally for the position of the porthole and then mark the center point between the junction here and the junction there, which gives us a deviation from the centre point of five millimetres here. Um, and I've done the same thing um, all along uh, with the other one. Um, and this centre point is three millimetres um, away from the centre line. Um, I think it's probably sensible to make them absolutely central, not least for the fact that the smaller the smaller portal is you see at the bottom it's at the the line of the curve and the line of the curve at the top it's it's somewhere in between being able to fit on uh, without it interfering with the curves 
we shall have to flatten it out. And that's the next job is to flatten it out. So what I've done is made an executive decision. We're going to go in the middle at the positions and then where the cleat is in the middle, uh, we're going to deviate uh, vertically from its position by four millimetres uh, from the centre of where it was. Down five and up four. Okay, because it's like five, four, three. So it'll just go. As we, I'll, I'll hope it's right. It's taken another age to fiddle about with that. Right. Before I just mark this finally, I'll just make the point about the opening position of of the uh, of the portholes. Um, The porthole has an orientation, and when the flap is open, when the glazing is open, it has a, an orientation to the horizontal, because it becomes horizontal. Right, if we were to put this porthole in, like straight, when we open the top, you see, it'll make an angle with the top of the coach roof, with the ceiling, if you like. I don't want that to be the way, so is to make that parallel, actually. So put the porthole in slightly crooked, it would seem, but so that it opens parallel to the ceiling. So you can see on the, uh, the porthole is a hinge, and the hinge has a cutout in the bracket, um, and the bracket then is to align that with the top of the coach roof, and not to, uh, like, that would be straight-ish. That is a bit crooked looking, but it opens parallel to the ceiling. So that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Now, my dears, I would like to pay tribute to my niece, Sophie. Now, we, I cut the... I, I fill these windows in. I did away with the windows, but I've had this. It's my thank you card for Christmas. And there she is, a picture of Arwen, bless, with two lovely round portholes in the side of the coach roof. I thank you, Sophie. I love the portholes. Thank you. Right, it's a bit of a while since we've had a flower update. Right, it's today again. Okay, that was in history. Uh, it's actually Sophie's birthday today, um, and seven years since I clicked on my bids to get my eBay boat, and here she is, right. Um, okay, right, um, what have we done then since then? I cut them out, um, but you see, I mean, it's... It's gloomy, it's been absolutely beautiful for weeks and weeks and weeks, but it's gloomy today. It's just put me in mind of, you know, if we're going to get to paint and doing stuff outside on it, is uh, I'll put some more cover over. First job, cover. Cover. I was just feeling a bit emotional. Well, I've got a cover over. I'm feeling a bit emotional about it. I've got a full, so it's raining. It's just been raining like a proper little shower. It's all dry. There's no drip even at all. I've got a boat shed. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I mean, I've just rough cut these holes so it might not fit, but I wanted to record this moment of just putting a putting this in.
<laughs> yeah, this is much more complicated. <laughs> Good, okay. That fits pretty well. Brilliant. Okay, well that wasn't quite as easy as it might have been, but it wasn't too bad. It's very, very thick, the side uh, where I've done that new glass fibre work. So... Mm. I think that's a pretty nice job. Happy with that. Okay, I'm just looking for a final fit then. I've got had some fixes ordered and so I've got these in now to try. What I want to try and do is just make sure that these are going to be flat. Is that there is a you see that's quite loose um, and as well this one's quite loose and just thinking then because we could take out that's because the we haven't got quite enough material there's a sandwich between the fixing plate and the porthole that needs a certain amount of material to fill it up and there's not quite enough material but I want to keep the portholes flat so once they're just fixed in then, is we'll be putting some more material on inside. But as well, there is a slight gap just on this side. There certainly isn't one on that side. There isn't really one here, but there is one there. So, ooh, loud, sorry, <laughs> it's a bit more material there then, and a bit more material there. We're just compensating for the f curve, because the portholes are flat and the side of the boat is curved, just compensating for that. And you can see where I've done that here, just with putting some more epoxy glass fibre fillets in there, and I've fared that off. I think that would be nice once that's filled and, and finished. And that side is completely good. Uh, but so we've got a little bit more material left to go on outside, and then we'll just fill it up inside then to make them flat inside as well. Um, good. But I don't want to fill it all outside because then once we tighten them down, the pull holes will be out of out of flat, and that will mean that the seal the seal is not as good. So they need to be absolutely flat. Right. Good. We're nearly there then, this is sort of approaching final fit uh, for these. I'm very pleased with how they're looking. Um, yeah, very smart indeed. Good. Good, it's tomorrow. Um, uh, right. Well, I put that on last night. So I've just got to reopen the holes. Put the portals back in again and see where we are. Good. Right, okay, let's have a look at that then.
Um, so I've just been over with the sander actually, we'll have a look at the other one, but this is, that is, you see there's no gap there, we've got no rocking going on, and there's no rocking on that side, there's no gap, it's pretty, that is a good, good fit. So what I'm using actually is a great big sander, the flat, it's a three quarter half sheet, three quarter sheet. sander um, and that's just big enough to bridge between the spots that we've got and the parts that we're trying to make flat in between them so we just bring that across and that flat sander is just bringing those parts flat and it's really working very well actually so very good I'll just give that a finish off I'll just give that a finish off good I just declared to myself that I had taken this into the realms of pure green. <laughs> there you are. Perfectionism is good. Uh, well, it takes a long time. So this, this passes the test. This passes my test of flatness. So I've got these rings on. That is, there's almost, well it's not perfect, but there's almost no movement in that. That is very, very flat. I mean it was flat before, but now it's very flat. And this one that was like within bounds when the porthole in, just looking at it really, so you've got to have a one meter, t uh, one millimeter tolerance on these. And that is just, we've still got, you can see, there's still some places where there are high spots. And this is just the way I'm just showing you the way I'm doing this. Is if you hold it, and you can rock it, and you found a high spot and just moving around, taking off the high spots until we've got it completely flat all the way around. So there's a high spot there, you can see that. Take the sand around and do that. And it's just taken me probably an hour to do the other one, but they will be flat. They will be flat. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Good. Okay, right, I'll stop in there. Good. It'll never be absolutely perfect. <laughs> to the micron. But I can't get... That's a real thin piece of card, that. So I can't get it in, the, in a gap. All around there. That's real thin card. That's like... That's about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimetre. So I can't get it in. So that's flat enough. Uh, so I'll have a look inside. I think we might be getting near to for getting these things in. <laughs> it's taken, what, 14 months, 15 months, 16 months, I don't know, longer, I mean, I haven't been doing it continuously, but my goodness, it's tried my patience this week, it has. <laughs> Been horrible for days and days and days I really haven't liked it uh, good okay well it's tomorrow so I've got them in they're in fitted done beautiful fit all around each of them um, when I fitted them in they re they were real loose really loose um, so I've actually just wedged with uh, mixing sticks um, around between the fixing plate and the and the side of the boat to pull them in tight um, and then put epoxy filler behind the uh, the fixing plate so that when I take them out hopefully the fixing plate won't stay stuck there I can take it all out and then have the just a record of the register, like a register surface, so I can finish the inside um, to the correct depth for when they go finally in. But when they go finally in, will be in the future. So I'll take them out, wash them. It's all very sharp. This dust. I don't want to scratch the plastic. It probably has already. Um, I'll put them away because they're fitted, and then take, and then I can fair, then 
the rest of this whole side, then the whole of the deck, and then get that painted. Um, and then jack the boat, because I can work on top before I jack the boat up. So I can then get more easily to the bottom of the boat, up in the air, um, and set her level so I've got the waterline right. And I get the epoxy primer on, and get a copper coat on, so the two epoxy coatings. Um, and they're quite weather critical, so I want to get those done. Uh, well, well, the weather's still good. It's the end of July now, so I've got a few weeks. But um, yeah, there'll be uh, there'll be a lot less sort of concerning once she can go back in the water. Then I'll be sort of you know insured against changes in circumstances should they come to pass. But uh, uh, I'm fairly confident they won't. So good. I'm glad to have that finished. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> right, paint, paint, promise, paint, yes. <laughs>